microdose, yeah, microdose, 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 dose, dose. What's good, y'all? Kush Hayes here coming to you with the newest edition of the Microdose. September is here. We are now in our Native American summer. I don't know how to introduce it anymore. It's autumn, and it's hot as hell. Both Southern California and Northern California have been going through some heat waves. What's weird about that? Well, San Francisco's usually pretty coastal, pretty foggy, but we're like, we got like California weather this week. We've got like 93 degrees uh, and counting. It's, it's pretty wild here. I'm staying next to my fam. I don't care what the governor says. That shit is staying on 24-7. Other hot news. Friend of the family, Janelle Smith. She's been on uh, the microdose here. She's got a feature film that she's a part of coming out September 20th. And she has arranged for us to talk to Cy Pina. Cy, welcome to the show. What's good, dude? How you doing? I'm doing good. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Janelle is an awesome woman. She is a great choreographer and she's one of my close friends in film and off off screen as well. So I'm glad that uh, she referred me over and, and we got this uh, going. Yeah, man. I'm a big fan of Janelle's. I wish I could see more of her work, but like she's just a, a fascinating woman. She's a fascinating individual. She's someone that just if there's a wall in her way, she's going to karate punch that fucking thing and she's yeah, going to go right through it, you know? Definitely. <laughs> We're talking about Nova. It comes out September 20th. I believe that's this upcoming Tuesday. It's going to be available on most of the major platforms, including DirecTV, On Demand, Amazon Prime, Vudu, and more. It's directed by Dana Cohen. Uh, how did you get involved in Nova, and what is it about? So Nova is actually a great movie. It's a sci-fi film. It's got a little bit of uh, you know your drama mixed in with some action, mixed in with some plot twists. And it's got, you know, the future, AIs, sentience, gone their way to Mars. So all that mixed together makes a great sci-fi film. The way I got involved into this one, I actually auditioned for a specific role in Nova. And when I showed up, I'm a little taller in stature, so I'm just two, uh, pushing 200 pounds. So Dana saw me and goes, wait, I have another role for you. Uh, how would you like to be an android? And I oh, said, fine. I was, uh, yeah, I said, hey, you, did you say Terminator? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, let's do it. I'm, I'm all for it. So uh, she ended up, we ended up, I ended up getting casted for the role of Troy, which is an android. Um, and these are all really lifelike androids. So mm -hmm. it, it's a really challenging, but uh, but a fun role to play because I get to start off, you know, downloading 5% computing, how to move, walk, talk, and act like an, a human. And mm -hmm. then as the film progresses, so do the androids progress. Uh, you see that a, a lot with uh, Nova, the main character. Mm -hmm. But you see it with all the robots as well. Um, and the way uh, I kind of started off was, uh, we started off with this character, and then we kind of developed it. It was a small role, and then he kind of kind of grew. So I was oh, really happy. Oh, wow. That's really cool. I mean, like, the best stories are like, I tried out for this character, and I didn't get it. And they were like, you should be this other character entirely. So like, one, you always get the job, but then like, you end up doing, doing the best work for a character you weren't even considering. You, exactly. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing Nova on the 20th of September. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a way to find it. My, 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 my thing is Apple TV or the iTunes. I prefer iTunes. I don't know why we gotta keep calling it different stuff, but not important here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm getting some senses of like Ridley Scott's Alien. I'm getting some Battlestar Galactica vibes from it. But a good story is a good story. Um. How long did it take to film? The filming actually took, I believe we were on set for a total of 21 days. Wow. Yeah, Dana had her own uh, studio set up where mm -hmm. uh, we uh, went ahead and measured everything out. That's where Janelle came in and she actually measured out the the studio or the space where the set where we would be performing all of our stunts and you know our mm -hmm. action scenes. And she mapped it out inside of a gym. So oh, we had- wow. to the ground where Janelle was where we mapped out the set so that's where we would get all our choreography and all our training um so to lead up to the day the first day of training was actually a good I believe two and a half to three months of prep oh, sure. that we had you know training for for this film making mm -hmm. sure we got you know the stunts down making sure we we were connecting because you know uh, fight choreography it's a lot like a dance sometimes you know you right. have to be able to react work with that what work with the other actors and they have to respond to you as well so um, it was a great process. It was a huge learning curve uh, for me. Uh, this is my first. This was my first um, feature film for myself. So, oh, okay. it was, yeah, it was great. 
Janelle made made the process really, really, really smooth. And so did Dana um, and everyone else, the the crew as well. They made the process so smooth for us to come in, get all our stuff done. And everyone was so adaptable. Um, I think we honestly, in, in reality, we we had a few days as always, right? In every in every movie where stuff gets chaotic, but we we kept moving, we kept moving forward. And everyone was so adaptable, and that's what I think made it so smooth. It was twenty one days where were packed. I mean, we were, we were go, 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 go. So it was, it was awesome to, to see it get done. And it, the post-production is what kind of, you know, took, took a little while longer. We were, we were looking to see who would take on the film, who would help marketing, promoting and all that stuff. So okay. yeah, this film was actually shot uh, January of 2021, I believe. Oh, five. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just in the middle of the pandemic too. I, I, for some reason, I was under the impression you guys had started pre-pandemic but but still the uh, obstacles and all that 21 days to shoot you said that there was like two to three months of prep for that i imagine you're making you know hundred thousand dollars a day uh on this pre-prep right uh, no 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 because no, uh, no. you got to be making like what what uh, fifty thousand dollars a day no no no, no. 50 it's bucks a day <laughs> no it's an independent film so you know we we were we weren't paid sag or, or sex care or anything like that right. um and a lot of us was uh was our first film so um you know we we appreciate the the fact that we were on this on this film and we appreciate the, the training too um janelle janelle opened up not only her dojo uh to kong martial arts in austin texas but uh, she also opened up herself to any questions, so she was always available too. So we all we had, we had our our, our screenwriters, we had you know we had our, our director, we had our our a fight choreographer, we had a lot of a lot of avenues to ask questions and really you know hone into our characters and what they really wanted. So mm-hmm. the experience was was um, not to say the least, but you know it, it was it was worth um, that preparation was worth. Uh, not not being compensated for financially, but what I learned on the along the process, I can't put a price on that. I gotta ask you, you're you're a gentleman from Texas. It's yes, the sir. eternal question I ask every gentleman, our lady from Texas. Are you a Guerrero fan or a Von Eric fan? I am a Guerrero fan. You gotta love the Guerreros, dude. Yeah, I got yeah. to see Eddie Guerrero beat Brock Lesnar at the Cow Palace, and we tore the fucking roof off the building. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like one of the last events they ever did at the Cow Palace here in San Francisco. But I was just like, yo, man, like we were here for history. Like it's, it's one of the only DVDs I've never sold. I still have my ticket stub. Like I see pictures of that moment, and I'm like, I, I got I well up a little bit because of what happened to Eddie Guerrero. But like the whole Guerrero family is just legends yeah yeah, sure can't understate it legends so um are you following any wwe right now i i'm way out of the loop yeah no as as of right now um the only thing i kind of keep in touch with is just boxing but i've been uh i was a boxer when i was younger i I boxed for a little bit and so Mm -hmm. i I was kind of just keep in touch but um i feel like there's so many there's so many fighting platforms now you got the ufc you got the Mm -hmm. female email ufc you got you know, boxing and you got golden gloves. You got, you got quite a bit of uh, some amateur fights here here in, in Texas. Uh, boxing mm-hmm. still real here in Texas. So it's uh, I try to, I try to stay in, stay in the loop as much as I can. Any thoughts on Canelo versus GGG part three? I mean, it's exciting. It's always exciting to see those guys go toe to toe. All right. Man, I just I, Canelo's work ethic, man. He actually Canelo actually trains in my hometown where I'm from. So I'm from the, the oh, valley. Sweet. Yeah, it's in, it's in the border. Um, mm. So every once in a while, people will see him running down there. So, you know, we got a lot of respect uh, for Canelo. He's he's a beast, man. Canelo is my favorite redhead on the planet. <laughs> I, I'm a redhead. He's a redhead. And I'm just like, yo, this guy is unstoppable. He, he didn't have a, a good good fight uh, two months ago, three months ago. But, like, he he advanced in weight. Like, he, he took on a challenge. Exactly. And he's like, exactly. he, he, anyway. A lot, a lot of people who aren't into martial arts uh, sports, they don't understand that, that 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 is he legit had to level up to fight mm-hmm. in a whole other level. It's a whole other ballgame. Yeah. I mean, he was he was just destroying everyone's liver in the, the weight class he was in. <laughs> yeah. Like there, it wasn't even a fight. Um, yeah. I was at a bar one night. I didn't even know Canelo was fighting and they just had it on the thing. I think I was supposed to pay 20 bucks, but I had been there already most of the day. So like I just watched the thing for free and. I don't remember the gentleman's name, but Canelo's fighting a Persian guy. And there's a Persian gentleman behind me, and he's doing the whole, like, that's my people. And I'm like, all right, okay. And, and sure enough, homeboy 
in the ring actually is like he's got all this fucking speed but like he'll he'll hit him with a two three four punch combo and then canelo just go like, whomp and just hit him in the liver just one punch and like you see him like just fading with each one and like my guy's still getting excited with all those combos I was like you guys got heart dude and he's got the speed he's got the talent but like my guy's crushing your kidney and, and now he's down and that was it you know yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I am looking forward to uh, seeing what Canelo does. What did they they had a draw, Canelo one, and then this is the rubber guard match, right? Yes. yes How do you right. feel about that draw? I kind of wish Canelo had maybe just taken the L on it, but that's me. Yeah, a draw I mean, in boxing not satisfying by any means. I feel like a draw in boxing is basically just to say, "Hey, we're gonna make money again off y'all." Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we shouldn't be I, doing yeah. that. But maybe yeah. I'm naive. Maybe I'm a purist. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I shouldn't call myself a purist because I'm I'm naive. But still, I looked at your IMDb resume, and I take every IMDb detail with a grain of salt. Uh, it says you've only been working since 2021, and by their terms, you fucking hit the streets running, kid. You got like nine projects out now. Some are short films, some are TV series. You've got like nine, ten other projects in the works. Some are pre-production, some are post-production, most are completed. How long have you been acting now? Uh, so, man, funny story, Kush. I actually, my baby sister, she wanted to start acting and it was during the pandemic. So, you know, I was like, well, I'll look around and I'll, I'm not going to pay for something I don't think you're going to get benefit, you know, you're going to benefit from. Mm -hmm. so i started looking around i found some and i said okay let me try it first so i walked in and you know just was just shopping around and immediately i this this passion i, I was a basketball player i played basketball through college and uh -huh. i played semi-pro semi -pro as well yeah. um, so you know all my all my focus and all my all my devotion was to basketball and you know my, my craft and, and that but there was nothing that could fill a void like that until i did my first acting skit in front of people just on a zoom meeting and it, it, it yeah, it completely changed my life. And this was, um, October, 2020. Wow. And, mm -hmm. and then I act, I just a couple of like, acting classes and I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and try to audition and this knocks me out. And it so happened to be that Nova was actually the first casting that I got as an actor. Okay. Yeah. Immediately after that, I got another project called Ebony hustle where, um, I, I got really blessed that it was, it was filmed in Houston. So came mm -hmm. in. I was the I was the main love interest for that. So that was really cool. Um, I do get to throw a little bit of hands there as well. I want to say in about eighty percent of my projects, I get to, I get to throw hands, which is what <laughs> make, makes me just so joyous about doing this. But it's fun. But yeah, so um, twenty twenty one, I was on set. Uh, twenty twenty December, I was on set for Ebony Hustle. Mm -hmm. January twenty twenty one, I was on set for Nova. Sounds amazing, man. I see you got, you got some VH1 true crime story. You you made it on the newest edition of Walker here. Uh, pro athletes cross the line. What what is that? So it's actually a super cool story. It was, it was originally going to be a story about uh, American athletes who were professional athletes, and then they never kind of got out of the life of crime. You know, they always say a lot of professional mm -hmm. athletes come from rough upbringings. Um so it's athletes that kind of never got out of it or reverted back to it after their, you know, post retirement from, from their career, from their professional career. So it was supposed to be just American um, athletes, mm -hmm. but the, um, the producer, she went, her and her husband are, are, are directing and producing uh, when pro athletes crossed the line, they went overseas and uh, they did some film festivals and they got some, they got some insight and they got some, some people to, not only donate, but also say, hey, what if you make it worldwide? Mm -hmm. So they were like, let's go for it. So I got the privilege to play a uh, Venezuelan boxer. And this guy was oh. was cold. Is, yeah, this guy was, was cold. Um, he was unable to fight in the States because he kind of had a rep of, you know, just kind of, you know, one of those. Yeah, oh, really? One of those. A little dangerous, was, eh? Yeah, it was a little dangerous. Um but the story, I don't want to, I don't want to give away too much of the story. Right. But mm -hmm. I, I was able to, to replay his life and, um, you know, kind of towards the, the, the turmoil and then him trying to get back into the game mm -hmm. and it you know, didn't, didn't work out that way. And so the second time I also play a, um, I, I play someone else or, or someone's biography or autobiography. Mm -hmm. What platform is that on? So that one is actually not released yet. They want to go oh, ahead sure. and 
Yeah, they want to get the whole first season out. So they have they mm-hmm. filmed, I believe, episodes one through seven, and I think they want to go ahead and finish out until nine, nine or ten episodes, I believe. Okay. And they're going to go ahead and push it all out at once. Yeah. So I'm seeing here the pro athletes cross the line. Edwin Valero, they they got you up to episode seven, but it looks like you're only in six of them. I, I, yes. Again, this is IMDb. Everything's yeah, a grain of yeah, salt. Yeah, no, I, IMDb. It kind of, it kind of, it messes up sometimes. So I'm actually the lead character. I'm the lead role in one. Damn, episode. son. Yeah, I'm the lead role in one episode, uh, and okay. then yeah, for VH1, same thing. For VH1, uh, my true crime stories. I'm the lead. I'm the lead for one episode as well. But I was able to come back and do some supporting roles for the VH1, uh, my true crime stories. Dang it. With your boxing experience, how hard was it to, uh, you, you say you get to throw hands sometimes, how hard was it to not just go all the way and connect and, and hit that guy in the jaw? Like, you, you definitely got to pull back your punches by a lot. Yeah, so uh, some, sometimes, but a lot, of, a, lot of t- a lot of times we do it so much that we mm-hmm. literally start, I mean, Janelle, like I said, I, I was revert back, revert, back, revert back to Janelle. You know, she has us actually in the dojo working on our form. So she wants she wants mm-hmm. us to, to to punch a certain way, you know. And every every martial arts has a little different way to, you know, like I like to say throw hands, right? Every every martial yeah. arts has a different way to to give to to give give hits and receive hits. Mm-hmm. So I believe the the fact that we were able to to do that so much in front of each other, it's kind of like okay, I know how Sai's going to throw his punch. I know when he drops his right elbow, you know that that right hook is coming. All right, you know I know. When he when he when he pulls back that that left arm, I know he's gonna throw that jab, and I think uh, I think it was it, it's more so it's more so wanting to take away my 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 boxing experience makes it a little tough, but because I sometimes I just want to be like you know what I can just, I can actually make it look really realistic if I just just connect a little bit, but mm-hmm. at the same time it's like man I don't I don't want to I don't want to hurt nobody and I don't want nobody to hurt me so. <laughs> <laughs> um. As an actor, have you have you developed a technique yet, or do you just like you just recite the lines over and over again until you memorize them? Like, do, do you have a technique at all? I do, I do. I, I, I mean, you. I think that's the first thing you develop as an actor because it's kind of it's a job, right? People, it's not. Mm-hmm. Just, I wish it was just like I just show up, read some lines, and but you know, you get there's there's a lot of prep work to it. For me, for instance, like first thing I do when let's just say Kush, you were to give me a character, you know, I want you to be, uh, you know, uh, I want you to be a baker. Yeah, I want me to be a baker. Okay, you want me to be a baker. Boom, right? Mm-hmm. So the first thing I would do is I would go in, and my mindset is I tie everything to music, right? I'm a big music okay. guy. So I'm making a playlist. What would a baker play at 5 a.m. in the morning or 4 a.m. in the morning when he's up? He's turning on all the ovens. He's getting ready to do all his work, you know. Mm-hmm. Time to have his employees come in. You know, what's the kind of premise that he sets up in his bakery? Does he own the bakery? Is, is he the, the the you know, the own the owner of the bakery's brother you know who is this guy that's the first and foremost right but the music what does he listen to that kind of sets the mood premise and then from there it's looking at the dialogue and seeing okay you know where because you know you have meisner you have all these you mm-hmm. know really really elaborate and, and educated ways of, of acting because i am a baby face i want i'm still in the process of finding what exactly is going to give me the the ability to bring the character from the paper to the screen, to the, you know, to the audience. So for me, it's, I'm still finding it. I'm still finding it. I'm still, I'm still playing around with everything. I'm still open to everything. Um, I, and I, every character, I, I, I take it differently. You know, this Meisner could work for this one. Uh, Katastrophe could work for this one. You know, you never know what, what could work for who, but. Okay. You're, you're a Texas gentleman, football. Yes, you, you a fan of that? Like, I feel like that's a religion out there, but some folks, it is. you might be that one in 1 million that isn't. No, no, it is. Football is huge here, man. Football, they always say football is king. I, mean, I played ba- I played basketball. That was my sport. But uh, football is still king here in Texas. So, you know, I'm, a, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. I've, I've been a Dallas Cowboys fan for since I can remember. You know, I'm, I was born in the States. I was raised a little bit in Mexico. So, mm-hmm. when Mexico State, you know, the Dallas Cowboys, that's America's team. Yeah. <laughs> so, All right. Yeah. So. No, no, I am. Um, you're a really nice person. So I hate to throw this at you, but my very first TV special was on Thanksgiving and we destroyed the Dallas Cowboys game out oh, here in San Francisco. It's regional. It's only regional. So maybe <laughs> folks folks on Thanksgiving weren't caring about the Dallas Cowboys, but like I was like, we just beat America's team in the ratings. Macy's Thanksgiving parade too, but I was all like, I'm going to hang my hat on that forever. When I say who's your team, is, is it the Dallas Cowboys or do you like, are you also like part of that like 
underground cult underground cult. are you part of that <laughs> fanaticism into high school football too no i i was when i was closer when i was you know closer to to high school age man you know because you know i i love football college mm -hmm. high school football is a whole different ball game uh, my baby sister she's in she's in color guard so you know okay. yeah it is i mean it, it it is crazy over here man you know you these these parents my parents were, were part of that too my my father and my mother they they were exact same way i mean mm -hmm. you know each, these kids like superstars because this is right. friday night lights baby that's where this is where it is to texas what is it about high school football that has such a following? Is it just like these are the possible newest stars that the NFL will see at their earliest incarnation? Like we we, we wish we could do it in junior high, but we can only we can only, our conscious will only allow us to go to high school, and then hopefully they go to college, and then the NFL. Like, what is the draw to high school football? I think so much because Texas is it's a big state, right? Just like California, so so much is 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 bred around these small towns small towns will literally close up shops to go to their high school football games. Mm -hmm. So it's, they're not, not just representing the the school, they represent the city, they represent the culture mm -hmm. of that. City. So I believe that's why we get so tied into, to the games. I mean, I, I don't think. Uh, Mad civic uh, pride. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. Um, who was your high school football team? Uh, so I, I actually, I played, actually, I played one year for the McCann Memorial Mustangs. <laughs> I um I went to the Lincoln High School out here in San Francisco, which was also the Mustangs. So there you go. That, there you that, go. that's a lot of fun. Our um our football team was mainly populated by Chinese and Filipino kids. And okay. they uh they're all very short. So <laughs> one day I saw the bus from Washington and I'm looking at all these towers getting off the bus. I'm like, you guys the varsity? Like, we're the JV. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> No. So, um, I think I got everything, man. Is there anything, anything you wanted to talk about more about Nova? Uh, just man, the, the the cast, the crew, everybody that was that's involved in Nova was amazing, man. Um, I really can't say how how blessed uh, I was to just to to be a part and just to learn from so much. I mean, you know, I, being a new actor, you know, you don't you don't uh, you, you get nervous to ask questions because you know. Okay. What is that? What what do these things mean? But uh, everyone was so receptive, and it made my first experience on set just such a great one that it it, it clearly just skyrocketed my passion for this. Um, I think um, Nova was that for not just myself, and for for you know the other actors like um, Layla, as well as Juliet and Chase, and um, you know it, we we all got the the experience of doing something. That was legit. I don't want to sound cliche, but out of this world mm. you know, for us, because, nice. you know, as, as an actor, as your first project, you know, CGI, um, having your your head um, in places besides your shoulders, you know, uh, as a it, that's I don't want to get again, I don't want to give up too much from the movie, but, you know, mm -hmm. CGI and, you know, getting your head put on your your, your body and being able to see that it, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. And it's uh. Uh, it was it was just from beginning to end. This movie has a lot of depth to it, uh, has a lot of questions thinking about the future. And, you know, what if you know what if how how will AI transition into the future? How will it progress? And and what will we see, uh, you know, as a as not only as as a as a people, but what will we see as a as humankind as we get ready to move to Mars or start to transition to a different planet? You know, because that's. What Elon is trying to do, right? Trying to get us to Mars. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, what, what happens when we get to that point and we start to need, you know, some some robots and stuff like that, some androids to help populate, help build on a different planet. So, um, if if uh, I, I highly recommend check it out if you have any kind of a love for sci-fi or if you just like, you know, just just action, uh, drama. If you like to uh, dabble in the question of, uh, you know, what is it to be human? Well, you know. How how fast can a robot, you know, how fast can a robot come up with the algorithms to be more human? How fast mm. can a robot understand lying and cheating and you know all the bad that comes with being human, not just the good? So yeah, man, definitely, I definitely, Kush, I appreciate you having me on here, man. And please, please, November, uh, September twentieth, you got to watch Nova. 
That's what's yeah. up, man. I um, I'm definitely going to put my money in on Nova because that sounds like an amazing feature. Awesome, man. Awesome. This was fun, Kush. This was fun, man. Yeah, man. Uh, sincerely, dude. Please, uh, please come back. Let us know when your next feature is. Um, we're following each other now, so I, well, I feel like I'll I'll be able to reach out to you when the next thing is ready. But let me know when the next thing is ready in case I don't see it. Bridge the other side premieres September twenty first. And okay. That, that, yeah, that's another movie. It's about mental health. I play a sm- I play uh, the main character's love interest. Um, so it's, I, I play a small role, but um, and this one is one of the only movies I don't get to throw hands. Um, okay. But, yeah, it's com- it's coming out. Um, and I, I'm actually going to be out in Beverly Hills uh, for the premiere for the Lady Filmmakers Film Festival in Beverly Hills. Okay. So this one is is actually just going to be a red carpet premiere. On oh the, shit! Um, Good at for the you, film man. festival, yeah, at the film festival, and then I think after the red carpet premiere, we're gonna go. Ahead, she'll go ahead. Her name's KT Curran. She'll the director. She will um, then give out what platforms and where she's gonna go ahead and push it out. It's kind of just spreading awareness. So with this one, she's spreading awareness for EMTs and how they went through the pandemic and what it what it really took out of um, EMTs and first responders to respond to these COVID cases and and okay. And, so it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. It's I, I really love the the idea and the concept when she when she described it to me, and uh, it's gonna be a it's it's a good one. It's a good one. I'm super excited to see where you go from here, Sai Pina. Again, yeah. I you've just confirmed what IMDb already knew. You hit the ground running. You're going hard, dude. You're gonna be a thing. I look forward to seeing more of it. Please come back when you've got another thing ready on the uh, on the on the way. For sure, for sure, Kush. I appreciate you, man. Keep in touch, and yeah, man. Uh, hope to be back soon. Sai Pina can be found on Instagram at Sai underscore Pina and Facebook at Sai Pina. There's a little hat uh, over the end there. And then if you want to know more about Nova, Facebook is the best place to check that out. Nova feature film. Again, it comes out September 20th. That's four days from now. Direct TV, On Demand, Amazon Prime, Vudu, and many, many more. I do some stuff around here. You're already listening to the microdose, but uh, once a week, every Wednesday, the best part of Wednesdays, we do the Waffle Box podcast. Me and friend of the family, Mike Fish, we talk about everything and nothing all at the same time. It's definitely a lot of fun. And uh, this plug is actually more for you, Cy, than anyone else. We do a show called Sweet Science Cinema. Me and Pro Wrestling Hall of Famer, Jameel Hemphill, we talk about some of the best and not some of the best uh, boxing movies and now pro wrestling films with sweet science cinema creed creed 2 <laughs> we, we we've done a bunch of stuff here you have to check that out um, that's all available on the bosnet dot family so for Sai Pena, i've been kush Hayes. you've been you From the Bosnet family. I mean, it's exciting. It's always exciting to see those guys go toe to toe.